I saw an interview with you uh, um, at where they were doing a piece on your guitar collection. And that house in Palm Springs is fabulous, man. You have a Les Pool out in the backyard. I have a pool shaped like a Les Paul. So I thought, why not go the extra mile? And oh, my God. That is just. logo made for the jacuzzi part of it. I'm looking at it right now. Why not get a logo made in tile that says, just like the Les Paul guitar in that script kind of font, it says Les Pool. So, I mean, why, why I'm wouldn't you go for a laugh? Why wouldn't you do that, Brian? Of course you to do that. You know, it, it was just, it's such a great pad. I mean, I'm looking over the desert right here and, and I feel so lucky and so blessed to have a getaway pad because yeah. I've been going to the desert forever, you know, as a place for a little peace and quiet and solace, a getaway, nature, good air. Um, and uh, so when it came time to maybe... We went to a wedding out here, and yeah. as you do, sometimes you get like kind of, you fall in love with it wherever you are if you're there for a couple of days, and that happened again here. Started looking around. Oh, it was my big mistake. I started looking at properties, and yep. before you knew it, I was in the middle of buying one, and it was really cool with this view, but it had a pool, but it was more of like a rumor of a pool. It was almost the size of a spa. Okay. I, this pill shaped thing. And I thought, Oh man, am I going to do this? I'm going to make a pool. And then, then I started thinking, well, if I'm going to make a pool, why don't I make a custom pool? How much more does that cost? Well, substantially more, but I decided, okay, what if it was a guitar and I was going to do an acoustic guitar, you know, where the, the two sort of shoulders are equal. And then there's the waist in the body. And then someone else said, why aren't you doing a Les Paul? And I thought, you know what? You're right. The stairs could be where the, that little one cutaway that goes like right. that, that could be the stairs in. And that's what we did. Oh, uh, well, why not have fun, man? You only, you only live once. That's what they say. That's right. So for the people listening, Brian and I know each other through a mutual friend by the name of Oliver Lieber. Yes. And we will get to um, playing together little later down the line, but Brian actually had me come and play with his band, the Bayonets. Uh, man, how many years ago was that? That's like five years ago or something. That has to be Crazy. six years ago by now, believe it or not. Jeez. Well, maybe more like five. Anyway, yeah, my band with Oliver Lieber, you know, we, we are partners in a band called the Bayonets and right. uh, we uh, were really lucky to have you on board for what a good week or something like that. Rehearsals, hanging, then I think we just did really only one gig though, right? The we did. Sure. Party. Yeah. And it was so much fun, man. What oh. a great, I just saw footage of that when I was doing my research for this. I'm like, that's right on the porch of that house. What a cool place for a, uh, a record release party too, by the way. Yeah. Right. So it's a, a club for those that don't know uh, in Los Angeles called no vacancy. And it's built in one of the oldest, structures in los angeles built around the time of the very first buildings in los angeles probably 1905 and it's it was a, a huge estate by by those standards back then and uh it, it used to be right there on hollywood boulevard but uh funny detail they actually instead of tearing the place down they moved it back you gotta be kidding me so now you enter off the, the street behind it, and that's where it sits to this day. And then there's all these shops and restaurants in front of it. But uh, yeah, No Vacancy LA and uh, this really cool hip group that has a bunch of clubs in LA took it over, hmm. renamed it, and uh, we played on what used to be the front porch uh, yeah. of, the, uh, of the old mansion. And, uh, and, and I think our guests would enter from the back, right? Right. They'd come in speak easy door. They'd need a password. They'd come up a stairway. They'd go down a hall with numbered rooms, like an old flop house, like an old right, whorehouse. Right, right. And they'd come to the last one, whether it's 21, I think was the name, the number of the room. They'd enter in and a lady of the night in her 20s garb would let you in. And she had her stockings on and you'd say the password and the bed would go up like this 
revealing a stairwell that you'd walk down into to get to the floor below it to enter the club. Unbelievable. What yeah. a cool vibe that whole thing was. And it was it was but, so much fun to hang and play music with you. So I'm glad we got a chance to do that. Me too. Yeah, that was together. so fun. It sounded so good. Oh, I enjoyed it. All of it. 